Brace yourself for the thrill of renovation. Four wheeling down walls. Hooking up the perfect roof. Hey, soup's on. And floors that'll make your head spin. Generation renovation starts now. Hi everybody, I'm Gard Swanson. We're in Suffolk, Virginia, where once again this renovated mansion is turning heads. But getting there meant mastering a few circus skills. We'll hear about the homeowner's high wire act in just a bit. But first, let's head west to Phoenix, Arizona for what I like to call a storybook renovation. I just love this neighborhood. It is so cute. And this is your house here. It is. It has uh, an English countryside feel to it, uh, almost like a fairy tale. It is a fairy tale house. How do you say fairy tale in Spanish? Oh, it's un, un cuento hecho realidad. Luz Marina and Jim Ayton couldn't resist. A 1930 cottage on the edge of downtown Phoenix. We wanted a historic home, and uh, somehow the uh, idea of renovating an old house uh, caught hold with us. <laughs> This old house is what's called a Cotswold Cottage, and it was definitely in need. Holes in the floor, holes in the roof, and 51 needy windows. It was your dream house on the outside, but kind of a nightmare inside. It, right. At the time, it was a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't easy getting to the ending point. But they did. <laughs> Two years of renovation, and the home has a colorful new personality. Luz Marina and Jim restored original detail to the living room and recreated the master suite. We knew if we could turn this property around, that we would have a, a very unique home. But turning it around would mean a lot of man hours. Luz Marina and Jim kept track of every single one. We're both pretty organized people, and we have day planners. Just a matter of going back and uh, adding them up. We'll give you the totals later, but first, the living room. Was it just an ugly mess? Oh, yeah. The walls were like a yellowish white with a lot of dirt and grime on them. The floor had uh, a lot of damage, a lot of holes. We're talking nail holes everywhere. It pretty much looked like bullet holes shot along the entire periphery of this room. The holes were filled with a colored resin, then sanded down to make a perfect match. I bet you can't find where the holes are. Let me see here. Oh, let's see. <laughs> I don't know where these things are. Tell me where they are. Um, well, there's one here. One right here? And here. Boy, it blends right in, doesn't it? Uh, you guys did a great job. <laughs> and I that we probably put six coats of sealer on this floor so that it would have that protection. That you do? Yeah. So we're talking man hours. There's man hours. That's uh, at least four or five. And that's not too bad. <laughs> not for Jim, but next door in the study, Luz Marina's man hours were skyrocketing. So was this the hardest job in the whole house for you? Yes, it was. More than one week. One week to do the whole floor? Yeah. On your knees? On my knees, yeah. With a razor blade? With the razor blade. Doesn't sound like fun. Mm, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Stripper wouldn't work. So scraping was the only way to get decades of paint off the original tiles. They are 81 tiles. So did you scrape this one with a razor blade? Yes. This one? Yes. This one with a razor yes. blade? This one? <laughs> yes. And how about the one way back here? Of course. This floor turned out beautiful, didn't it? Oh, yeah, I love it. This is a beautiful floor, muy bonito. Down the hall and through the kitchen, a much easier job, a breakfast room in need of some color. Who we'll picked this color? Only a woman could pick this color. <laughs> I was a very popular guy at the local paint store. I was like Norm on the sitcom <laughs> Cheers. I'd walk in the door and they'd yell out my name. <laughs> And you repainted the entire house, right? Everything. Mm -hmm. Baseboards, windows, walls, everything. Man hours. Man hours. Man hours. We both kind of had separate duties. I, I was the, the master roller, I was called. And I was the aging. She was the aging master aging. cutter. <laughs> Over in the master bedroom, 
the floor still shows the outline of the original closet. It came down and in went an arch to the sunroom next door. It's absolutely incredible. You just cut into a wall, you get rid of a closet, you throw a window in, you got a master suite. Yeah, we went with one color throughout uh, to tie everything together. Outside, the man hours were gaining more ground. Jim filled in every paver with Mexican river rock, and Luz Marina tackled the plants. But repairing the roof had everybody steamed. What is this thing back here? This is our uh, boiling cauldron. 6,000 pounds of cedar shingles had to be boiled, bent, then rushed to the roof to create that curve appeal. Do you like it well done? Or I like these well done. Actually, medium rare is how I like my shingles. So I'm just dropping it on like this. Yeah. That baby looks great. And now the totals, the man hours. Jim, 3,000. And Luz Marina, 3,800. We have a winner. Luz Marina, let me see your muscle. That 3,800 hours, look at that. Be careful. <laughs> The best part of this job was when, when I, it was done, it was uh, beautiful. Some might even say it was like a fairy tale. Yes, it, is. it has been for us. <laughs> yeah. We've been very fortunate and mm -hmm. it's had a very happy ending. Fear of heights. I'm going down 30 feet through this class. Need not apply when we come back. The owners of this Virginia mansion tell me this is called a speaker's balcony. No speeches today, just a tale of renovation and a dream that came true. My father grew up here in Suffolk, knew the home, used to make deliveries to the house. So when I got married, I brought my children out here and told them one day we're going to own that house. Mickey Boyette was in awe the day he bought this 1914 Greek Revival mansion in Suffolk, Virginia. It was almost like a dream. As for wife Denise... I was overwhelmed because I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to clean this. <laughs> this is a little snapshot of, of what the whole house looked like. The ceiling trying to come down, usually because there was water coming through up above it. The condition of the wood that you see here, this was pretty um, indicative of the, what the mahogany looked like downstairs. It was filth. It was absolute dirty, dirty, dirty. <laughs> but it was also absolutely gorgeous. You could see the, the grandeur of everything. It was Everything was still intact. It was just worn and, and ugly. Today, worn and ugly are gone for good. Denise and Mickey brought the grand entrance back to life, created a parlor worthy of guests, and warmed up the upstairs. And we didn't have any idea it was going to be as hard as it was, but once we committed to it, there was no turning back. Everything we discovered was good. You know, these were in the open position, but we didn't know they ex existed because there was wood encompassing. And we released all that, and to our surprise, they opened right up. And the floors in this room are, are beautiful. When we cleaned, we got to these spots, and we noticed that there was a rosewood pattern that was not visible to us at all in the beginning. It's true artistry. <laughs> For two months, these were my best friends. They got a lot of miles on them, a whole lot of miles. We ended up using all total about, um, about 100 gallons of lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner will make you absolutely drunk within 15 minutes, and we were doing it all day. The, the fumes were tremendous, and you could even smell it when he would go to bed, even after a shower. That's didn't how, tell me that. That's how bad it was. Over in the dining room, those box beams were revealing a little too much. You just saw plumbing, just plumbing and plaster and just really ugly. Knowing that he knows nothing about plumbing, I'm thinking, oh my god, who's going to fix that? Truth is, Mickey pulled it off and put it back together.
I'll notice even when we're sitting here eating, um, people aren't really paying attention to Denise or I. They're looking around at the woodwork and all. And there's plenty more where that came from. Like upstairs, where Mickey and Denise renovated their way through nine bedrooms and four bathrooms and added this 400-pound marble relief to the master. Oh, gosh, was it six of us to get it up here? We're lucky we had this little ledge right here to set it on. And drill it in for good. If anybody don't like it 100 years from now, they'll probably have to chisel it apart to get it down. Yeah. But the real star of the second floor is this 11-foot tall beauty. We just got on both sides and used a toothbrush and just scrubbed each little square of glass. Oh, yeah, we tell each other when you missed a spot or you could see it. No, it's on your side. No, it's on your side. So, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. And a little arguments with Clara. But for Mickey, restoring the stained glass was nothing compared to what waited above. When I purchased the house, this probably had a, a little greater value than the entire house, J just this dome right here. The dome is a certified Tiffany work of art, shielded by a box in the attic, and cleaning it would be an adventure in acrobatics. Well, I, I borrowed a board actually from a, a paint contractor that was long enough to go from this piece of wood, and we laid it across like, like this. And I laid down on my stomach and just uh, started cleaning. Just kind of working, uh, kind of kind of working like this, you know? Scary? Nah, never even crossed his mind. About every 15 seconds. I'm going down 30 feet through this glass. Today, there's just one room left in this renovation. Let me show y'all our last project, the kitchen. Somebody made an attempt at redoing the kitchen, but they weren't so successful. Denise and Mickey will get to the kitchen eventually, but for now, they're just happy to enjoy the view. And my mind goes back to the time that it was built, and you know, almost 100 years ago, and the, the, the ingenuity that went into the house, it, it's incredible. It's every girl's dream to have a mansion. I have my dream. A revved up tractor, a few swift kicks. We all gave out a big cheer. It's renovation Kansas City style up next. I hated it. <laughs> well, I couldn't believe anybody would live in it. I mean, it was a mess. For Kim and Tracy Stearns, renovation was never on the radar when they bought this shotgun shack in Linwood, Kansas. We thought at first that we would just live in this mess and then build our dream home up on the hill. But then once we got in there, we realized we couldn't even live in the house. The 1920s home was rotten to the core. The kitchen was on the verge of collapse. The fireplace falling apart. It was awful. It was disgusting. Everything but the land. It just had this romance to it. On, on a, it's hard to find five acres out in western Kansas that isn't uh, a flat field. The renovation took 10 years, but today, Kim and Tracy have the funkiest farmhouse in Kansas. Steel took over the exterior, and a cool new loft boosted the size to 2,000 square feet. And it was one of those deals that we wanted it to be like a cab, and we wanted it to be like a vacation home, and we felt like in order to do that, you had to build it yourself. But first, that pitiful old kitchen had to come down. Oh you always see on the shows and everything where people rip something off by hauling it with a truck or whatever. So anyhow, we just for fun, we thought we'd try to get it ripped down on with, with my tractor. It's fair to say Kim and Tracy were radical renovators, especially when it came to building the kitchen back up. 
the store shop counter slid right into place. But that salvaged wine rack put up a fight. Tracy built the wall, but he didn't build it big enough. I thought I had correctly <laughs> measured, but uh, obviously I was off. By about an inch. Basically, we put a car jack at the top and a car jack at the bottom. And then once the car jack was removed, the walls came back in and it just held it together. <laughs> Over in the family room, it was Kim who went wild with demo. Kim was at that time taking karate. Actually, what was it called? Karate. One kick and a whole wall would come down. Every wall came down and an inspiring 20-foot arch went up. Well, it's holding up the roof and it's also giving us a, a, a break between one space and the other space. The other space is the living room where Tracy had a busted fireplace to fix or at least hide. Uh, I was too lazy to take the brick down. <laughs> it's one of those deals that I'd already built the home, and I knew you know, I didn't want to have a big hole sitting here again. So I thought, what's the simplest thing to do? And we love concrete block. These are actually blocks that, as cheap as I am, I cut a block in two. I had it all scored, and it gave it a lot of depth. almost gave it a limestone look to it. Meanwhile, Kim had her mojo working next door, turning an old closet into a groovy new bathroom. We've always collected rocks from vacations, and we've collected marbles, and we've kind of collected uh, some of these tiles from tile places that were going out of business. And I'd have a blanket down on the floor, and I'd have a blanket over them, and I'd crack them, you know, with a hammer. So it's really easy. You just glue the back of them with a, a heavy-duty glue. That's it. Which meant Kim and Tracy could finally move the renovation up the steel staircase, where by now, unconventional methods were the norm. The appraiser said, you know, I thought you had a two-bedroom home. And I said, I do have a two-bedroom home. I go, there's a bed and there's a bed. Greenhouse plastic serves as a simple partition between the two bedrooms. But renovating the bathroom was one cliffhanger of a job. It was another MacGyver move on how to get a cast iron tub up to a second floor level. I waited for one weekend when I had some friends show up. We were thinking that, well, are we going to get it up, number one. Number two, will the boards break? And number three, will our backs break? Once we got it here, we all gave out a big cheer. The tub was in, and the final touch? Two sinks, put in the middle to save on window space. It makes you proud. Yeah, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in it. I love the crooked teeth of it. Nothing has to quite match, you know, and it's, it's very eclectic. Come on, baby doll, come on. It, it turned out great, it's, it's fun, and everything we do in here um, makes it just a little nicer. When we come back, the ultimate kitchen makeover. Get ready to drool. Imagine spending six months renovating just the kitchen. Our next homeowner did, but when he was done, he created a one-of-a-kind cooking space the size of an apartment. How is it? There? Good. You could say that for all 650 square feet of this Tulsa, Oklahoma kitchen. That is, if Pat and Roger Schomeyer will let you call it a kitchen. I call it the family room now, not the kitchen. OK, you just happen to be cooking in the family room. And here we have the Schomeyer kitchen in the process of being completely demolished. I hear a noise. What is that? What is that? Oh, wow. It's Roger. Roger. OK, so demo was a little trickier than that. Bedrooms, even bathrooms came down to expand the space. Right over down here in this whole area was a bedroom. 
so we knocked out that wall and included that. I, I guess what I like to point out the most is right where the refrigerator is was a toilet. An area now called the short-term prep zone. One of five zones in the space. This is our number one long-term prep area. This is the main cleanup zone. To the left of the sink is our coffee center. This is all about the wine, you know, and beverage center. Everything is in its place. Roger is all about function, and this kitchen is extremely functional. It really is. This is a concrete countertop. We actually poured this on the job, and we used a piece of PVC pipe. I think it was three inches. We cut it in half and mounted it to the face of the deck. Then when it all dried, we removed it, and we had this edge. I love the look. I love the color. Turned out very nice. And so did the floor. There used to be an adobe tile, which chipped pretty easily because it wasn't really a strong ceramic tile. Surprising, considering what it took to remove it. Wow. Jackhammers, tile chippers, noise, beating, knocking, headaches, and money. Luckily, the new ceramic didn't break the bank. And it was discontinued. It was 99 cents a piece. Here, Gracie. Up above, the couple raised the old ceilings a foot to make way for this baby. It's like nine foot by 14 feet. And it's a vent hood, which I can flip it on right here. And you can hear the noise of it. It also is the lighting for the island, as you know. This is called Shrimp Acapulco. <laughs> we love to entertain, we love to cook and have people over. We have the music going. We've even had people dancing over there, you know. It's, we just have a good time. Dancing on the table, do. too. <laughs> we won't go I into that. Hmm, <laughs> you've done it again, Roger. Of course, everything tastes better in this kitchen. I'm Gard Swanson. See you next time on Generation Renovation. Hear it purr. Oh, the great sound of a non-running engine. I'm dying. Before I go, was it really 3,800 man-hours? Goodbye, guard.